Hello and welcome to Sue Finley Designs. So what has been happening this week? Well first of all I've received a package in the mail all the way from California. It has come from Colour Art and um, a lady called Judy Sand contacted me and said that she absolutely adored these products and wanted to know if I would be interested in testing them so she, a uh, friend Leslie Onstad from Colour Art actually sent me these to try out so these have come all the way from California so thank you Leslie um, apologies if I, spell, if I pronounced your name wrong but um, <laughs> anyway so what uh, what is in here so she sent me some mica flakes uh, there's a couple of different colours. I believe that she's hand coloured these herself so I've never used uh, mica flakes before so uh, I'm not entirely sure what to do with these so I'm going to have a f uh, some fun experimenting with these and I will of course video the process on what I do with them. I might be using them wrong I don't know but there'll be videos coming out showing how I use these mica flakes like I say they're, they're, they've been hand coloured I don't know if you can see that there but they're absolutely gorgeous so that one's a gold one in here as well so they're beautiful so what else has she sent me so she sent me so th th this range here is called Blingit uh, pure mica minerals so this looks like they're in powder form so there's um, what colour is that one? That's uh, interference, interference Violet Pearl. Now I've used interference pigments before. They work really, really well on dark backgrounds because then the colour shines through. So I'll be doing some videos trying these out. Um, so there's a whole range of different colours. Red Pearl, Gold Sparkle. And you can't, and with the interference you can't actually see the colour until you place it on something dark so they all look white so I, I would imagine that it's quite a nice surprise I actually like the interference for doing galaxy pictures so I may well do a galaxy one using these colours so where else is in here um, interference green blue blue sparkle and an interference gold pearl also we have in here what have we got here um, these are resin art luster pigments um, and they're brilliant iridescent colours for use in epoxy resin so I'm going to have some fun playing with these. We've got Mystic Primrose, uh, Pistachio, Ginger Bloom, what else have we got? Purple Sapphire, Aquamarine, my daughter loves this colour so I should imagine I'll be doing something with that. It's one of my favourite colours. If you haven't already noticed, I do a lot of blue stuff. So then we've got, um, what colour is that one? Delphium, Delphinium, Butterscotch. So anyway, so I'm going to have bits of fun, so I'll be doing some videos with these. So thank you, Leslie and Judy, for sending these to me all the way from America. So I was like, a, it was like being at Christmas opening these up, so thank you. So what else have I been doing this week? Well, on Wednesday of last week, um, a, a chap from Kalgoorlie Arts contacted me and asked me, he and said that he liked some of my pieces and would I be interested in submitting a piece to the Kalgoorlie and Boulder Art Prize? So, and he said, but the the thing is the. Um, the deadline for the application was yesterday, so as in Monday this week. So I thought, well, you know, I like a challenge, I'll go for it. The theme was, or is, I should say, a place to call home. So I had to put my thinking cap on and I came up with this piece, which I've entitled Home is Where the Heart Is. Now, I'm not going to be doing a video on this one, I'm afraid simply because this one is all about my journey from the UK to Australia so if you haven't already guessed this is not an Australian accent and I've been here for 13 years so this represents the journey from the UK and the the hardship that we've experienced being here you know it, 
setting up a new home, finding jobs, um, and we've found it tough over the years, and at times we've struggled to keep our head above water, hence the water theme. And I don't know if you can see the, the hand. Well, the hand is actually my hand that I moulded um, using Pinky Sill silicone mould, which is a two-part silicone liquid mould that I bought from Barnes in Australia and I literally put my hand in a bucket and left it there for 20 minutes while it um, created the mould. The heart is um, was originally made out of polymer clay and then I've again then made a mould from it and then poured the resin and then put and the water was similar to what I've done previously with the vases and everything like that so same sort of principle that I pour the resin um, onto sh plastic sheets and then bend and shape it so although I'm not doing a video on this particular piece I will be doing videos in the future of how I, I create molds from making my own designs and then using the resin so I will be doing something with that so this one is actually going off to Kalgoorlie um, two weeks this Thursday so that's going to be going off there so fingers crossed that this piece resonates with the judges and um, I, you know perhaps might win something so or you know better you know if it sells that's good as well so I'll be happy with that so that's what I've been frantically working on over the past week so I'm actually just going to stop you here one second while I go and get the other piece, so just bear with me one sec. So before I go into um, the piece that I've been working on and what the, this video is about, I also want to show you that my book has finally arrived from America, uh, from Amazon. So I've had some of these delivered to Australia because unfortunately it's not available on the Amazon marketplace. So I've had... I've set up an, um, a Shopmate account in the US so I could get Amazon to send it to that um, warehouse and then Australia Post then send it to me in Australia. So I've had some copies of these sent here which are now uploaded on my website. So if you're in an area where you can't get the book um, then I can ship that out to you. But it's still available on Amazon US. UK um, and most of the European countries. Unfortunately, it is only in English, so um, <laughs> that's the only language I'm speak I speak. I'm afraid I'm a bit. Um, I'm not very good that way. So, but anyway, this book is now available. It's a full colour book um, with, you know, information on how to get started, basically. So this this book will is ideal for those if you've never used resin, don't know where to start. Um, then this little book is going to help you on your way and, and I hope will actually save you a little bit of money when you're um, starting out on your resin journey. So they're, they're available on Amazon and like I say now on my website and I'll ship these around the world if you can't get it through Amazon UK or the US. So what have I been working on this week? So I've been working on, let me turn it around, this piece. Now this piece, I, I was actually at my local reject shop and I found these lights here um, going for a very, very good price. I think they only cost me a couple of dollars for, no more than five dollars for these lights, um, the little butterfly lights. And I thought, what can I do with these? And I thought these would make a really nice piece of a res for a resin piece for a girl's room. So, so I thought, right, what am I going to do here? So, what I've got happening in the video, and I don't see how the you've got the three D leaves. So I've made the leaves out of resin. So I'll show you in the video how I made those. The background of the board is just foil, and uh, that seems to be the theme at the moment: is foil backgrounds because I wanted to have like a translucent look but also I wanted the foil to reflect and complement the silver butterflies then we've stapled the wires to the board and then using the acrylic gems I've actually covered the wires so that you can't see them through there now you can if you actually wanted to look for them you can actually find them but in the in the general viewing of it you don't notice the wires so the stones are in there and to make to 
to stop the butterflies looking like they're just floating on the top, the 3D leaves is what helps lift the piece. So for the back, because this is a battery operated light, I've actually, just let me move this up. You can see what I've done is I've actually attached, the lights come round the bottom here and then they go, so the little um, switch will just sit on the back and to house that I've just put two blocks of wood top and bottom so that when it's on the wall it stands away from the wall and then this will just sit on the back so that when it's on the wall you can actually get access to it to turn them on and off. So what does it look like when it's on? So it's, it's daylight today so it's not going to be, um, you're not going to see it that well I don't think so, just let me turn this on. So yeah, you can, so I'll come around this way. So you can see here that's the lights on. So at night, that's actually it's you've got two different looks happening with this. So you've got the during the day the silver butterflies, and at night when it's lit up, it creates a nice effect. So, without further ado, I think I've been talking quite a bit too much just now. So without further ado, let's get into the video on how I make this. So as you can see, I've just poured some resin onto a bit of cellophane, and these, this cutter I had in stock already for cutting polymer clay but I decided I wanted to see if this could leave an indentation in the resin in the shape of the leaves. So that's what I'm doing as I'm just experimenting to see if I can make a pattern in the semi-cured resin. So this resin's been curing for quite a few hours now so it's not sticky to the touch so when you put your fingers on it you know you're not leaving you're not lifting any of it off but it's still it's not cured to the point where it's hard so this makes for um it being good to leave the indentations in the resin so what I'm doing here is I'm just placing this on there and then just applying some pressure to make sure that we get the pattern happening on the resin. Now at this stage I didn't know whether it would the resin would try and level itself out again. I had a, a suspicion that it wouldn't because it had been curing for quite a few hours. So but yeah so basically I'm just going to go through all this now and just cover the whole of this and the other one to the right in the leaf pattern which will then cut cut out properly when the resin is fully cured so we'll do that tomorrow. Now I bought these cutters off Etsy all years ago for the polymer clay I don't know where you would get these so I will have a look to see if I can find them and if I can find them they will be listed in the description below um, otherwise um, you'll have to try and do your own research and find them. So what I'm doing here is I'm just very just quickly just cutting round um, the shapes. I started cutting them individually, um, but then because it's still not fully cured, I was pressing some of the the pattern out. So I decided to actually just cut them in groups and come back to them tomorrow to cut them properly. So these have been left overnight but what I did do is I, when I cut them into uh, groups of two or three I actually placed them in an egg carton to start the bending process so that while they're cu curing it's bent. Now don't worry if you don't have egg cartons or whatever to hand, we're actually going to bend these further because what I'm going to do in, in a minute is once all the leaves have been trimmed out we're actually going to shape them further with some sellotape and then leave them to cure um, for another couple of days until they're completely hard. And as you can see you can still see the shape of the cutter 
in the background there so it's given a really nice effect on the leaves rather than it just being a bit of flat resin. So now that they're all cut out it's now time to shape them further so because they're still quite pliable I'm actually just bending them ever so slightly and then just using sellotape to create the the curve that I want to do. Some of them are actually flat, I don't want them all curled um, because I, I want it to be quite random so I'm se just selecting a, a few and bending those. If your resin is a little bit hard at this point and you're finding it difficult to bend then you can actually apply a bit of heat and that will help with making it a little bit more pliable so there are ways that you can do it because what you don't want to be doing is, is snapping your resin so it all depends on your resin on how well that turns out but you, like I say you can use a little bit of heat for that. So as you can see I've already applied the foil to the background on this piece and I'm now just going to position the butterflies on the board and then staple them to the board. Being careful not to have the staple go through the wire. Um, so I'm just going to position these um, across the board like so. Now don't worry too much about the wires being on show here because as I mentioned we're actually going to use the acrylic diamonds to cover the wires so that they're hidden and as you can see even without covering them in the stones because the the clear um, sheath and the metal wire against the foil you don't really see it that much so um, so that, that's going to be quite well hidden. So now we need um, a place to hide the the switch. So because of the thickness of the actual switch at the back there, I've just cut some bits of wood um, that are about the same depth of them, and they're just going to be positioned on the back to have them standing off the wall just enough but so that you can hide the the switch and I'm just using a Tarzan glue to just glue these onto the back now you can use brackets or screw them on or whatever but this I find this is not a heavy piece that the Tarzan glue is enough to just hold this wood in place and I'm going to tape the wires so that they're not sticking out also on the back but leave enough so that you can pull the element out to turn it on and off and then just slip it back into the background when it's on the wall. And I'm just eyeballing this just using the grid from my mat below to position and making sure that that's straight. I could have measured it and things but I decided <laughs> not to bother. So I've just placed a couple of heavy containers on the top there to just hold it down while that glue takes. So it's been a few days now and this this resin should be hard enough now to stay in place and not try and move back so as you can see we've now got some interesting leaf shapes which will then add dimension to the resin piece. Now I've done two lots of these leaf shapes so I'm actually going to be working on another artwork using these shapes so there'll be another video coming where I've used them in a different manner so keep your eye out for that one. So now that all the elements are prepared it's now time to move on to the next phase of this piece which is covering the wires with the acrylic diamonds and what I've done here is I've actually covered coated the diamonds in resin like in some other of my previous videos and I've mixed them so that they 
can create like a mound over the wires so just applying that with a spoon I'm just going to go around and make sure all the wires are covered quite generously with the acrylic diamonds and I'll also go around the edge of the butterflies to help ground them a little bit and give something for the leaves to sit on so that we can create the 3D effect with the leaves so that just gives it some kind of place for the leaves to balance and make sure that those are well and truly stuck to the board. So when, like the other videos where I've used what, um, foil, I like to just tint the resin just ever so slightly with a little bit of India ink so that we've got um, it quite transparent so that you can see the foil reflecting through the colours. And I've mixed, just mixed up two colours. It's a green India ink and a red India ink. So although it looks quite pink, it actually, when you just put a couple of drops in the India ink it comes out quite pink so this quite works quite well for the theme of a girl's room and then when you can see the two colors mixed together it forms like a bluey purple color so it, it looks like there's four uh, three colors in there but whereas in actual fact there's only two and then just using a stick I'm just going to move that out to the edge to just make sure that flows okay So I've just turned on the lights on the piece just to see how the colours are looking and interacting with the lights and then just adding a bit more resin where I feel a bit more resin is required. Now I don't know you can notice to the side there that the light switch I've actually placed in a plastic bag just to make sure that that doesn't get covered in resin from any runoff um, because that would be a disaster if the switch and everything was resin short or after all this hard work. So once you've finished pouring the resin it's now time to add the 3D leaves and I'm literally just going to go around and just position these around the butterflies using the stones, the gems I should say, is an, an element to help with the balance and positioning so they can help with making sure that they stand up and they've got a, a good 3D effect happening so I'll just go around and position those where I feel it needs, they need to go. So as always, you'll find a list of the products used in this video in the description below, along with links to where you can buy the Mica Flakes from Colour Art, links to my Facebook page, Facebook group, Instagram, etc, etc. So if you like this video and like to see more resin, resin ideas then please subscribe to my channel or better still go and browse my other videos. I have other ideas that hopefully will keep you inspired. So until next time, see you in the next video. Bye for now.